As we've been going through the collection that we have here at the museum, sometimes the things that we find are wrapped in newspapers. And we've been fascinated to see how sometimes the newspaper that something is wrapped in is more interesting than the thing that it's supposed to be protecting. People don't realize a lot of times the impact of the history that is happening right now, something that just seems normal because, you know, we're leading up to things incrementally and all of a sudden they happen, it's a big deal, but we don't really think about the importance of, of preserving that. Um, we started setting aside some of these newspapers and then we actually found several boxes of old newspapers that were in storage. At the same time, we had a friend come in that his son had been given a suitcase with a bunch of old newspapers. The, they were newspapers, everything from like the Kennedy assassination, Abraham Lincoln's assassination, some really, really old things. The front page of the Desert News when it was covering the Titanic sinking, it just mentions that the Titanic had hit an iceberg, but they didn't think anybody was going to die. It's so interesting to see how long it would take for information to travel. We are so used to knowing everything that is happening right away today. When so many of these things that are in these papers, when they were happening, it took days for the news to reach different parts of the world. One of the most interesting things that we found in the collection was an actual print of the very first edition of the Deseret News. It wasn't in very good shape, but we were able to preserve it, get it framed, and, and save it so that other people can, can see that. It's so fun in that paper to see the hopes that the state and the founders had for what was gonna happen in, in Utah, what their vision was as they talk about what the purpose of this newspaper is going to be. It's not just the headlines that are so intriguing about these newspapers, but just looking at the ads and the things that they were selling. One of my favorites is an ad for a corset, and it was selling it as you know corsets being the cure to women's hysteria. It's really interesting to see the things that these people really believed, or just you know just even a few years past, really believed and, and thought. And it makes you really stop and think: What is it that we think or believe right now? that our kids are gonna think is really hilarious that we ever fell for something like that. As we've been putting the exhibit together, it's been really fascinating for me just to watch my staff and volunteers and, and people look at, at the newspaper and hear stories that they've never heard before. There are events in each of our lives that we remember where we were. I often heard my parents' generation talking about how they could tell you exactly where they were when Kennedy was shot, even if they were in a different part of the world at the time. Another one that you, we hear them talk about a lot is how the whole world was watching together and they remember when man first landed on the moon, what a huge event that was. And it's so fun to see the nostalgia that comes over people as they, you know, as they see these things. I wanted to share some of the events that were really big deals in, in my lifetime, stories that really affected, affected me in the world. And noticing now that some of those stories, even ones that I feel like are so recent, like 9-11 and everything that happened then and what was happening in the rest of the world at that time, most of my kids don't remember that. Most of the, my staff doesn't remember that. They were too young. A couple of the headlines that brought back so many memories of my childhood were the Challenger explosion. A lot of my kids didn't even know about that. And being able to go back and read about that, what was happening in the world around the same time, put it into, into such great context. Another one was the fall of the Berlin Wall. I remember exactly where I was, what I thought, what the politics of the world were like. These are really significant events that were surrounded by many other stories of many other things happening in the world. And if, if we were just to go on the internet and look up this story by itself, we would get all the facts and some of the stories about you know the Berlin Wall falling. But you don't get the experience of seeing what else was happening in the world at that time. What were people's opinions about you know what was happening about it and, and editorials and things like that. Reading it in a newspaper that is reporting about the whole world together and the community together adds an amazing context to the story. We went for several years where we thought it was gonna be the end of newspapers. The newspapers were just declining and declining and declining. Several of them went out of business. It's been interesting, the statistics now show that especially local papers are increasing in circulation. People want to know what is happening in their community. You can check CNN or you can 
you know, wherever you get your news from and you get like the big headlines, but you don't necessarily know what the local football team is doing or what is being voted on in the next, you know, current election, what the city council's up to. The things that matter to you in your community aren't being reported in a lot of those national papers.